In this presentation, we are going to discuss use cases. This is a term that is used quite a bit when working with DHIS2 and also throughout this course. The introduction we are presenting is by no means an in-depth description. However, it will give everyone some familiarity of the overall process that is used when defining use cases in DHIS2. We will start with a quick review of what a use case is in reference to DHIS2, followed by the tools that are reviewed to contribute to use case development. We will quickly cover the process of reviewing these tools as well as how DHIS2 can potentially enhance workflows. Lastly, we will cover some background on use cases that are used in this academy. The term use case describes the application of the DHIS2 system to a specific context such as a national immunization program or an international survey. Use cases are used to define how we take field-level requests and incorporate the requested functionality into DHIS2. When implemented into DHIS2, they can describe the totality of how a specific service will function. The ability of DHIS2 to be adapted to meet the needs of different use cases is a key part of DHIS2's ability to work in so many settings, evolving over time. Use cases allow us to understand the need for capturing specific data items, such as data elements associated with a malaria patient, and how to configure DHIS2 to be able to use the information captured so that it supports an organization's goals, such as reporting and testing targets. Use cases are composed of several components. For example, specific data collection tools, standard operating procedures, and reporting outputs. We see some examples of this here a malaria line list or data collection tool that would be used to define what data elements we need to collect. A standard operating procedure that defines how the data are actually collected. And an indicator framework that is used to define different reporting outputs. In the previous subsection of this course, we used several diagrams to discuss the structure of event and tracker programs. For a specific use case, these program diagrams are produced by reviewing a program workflow from start to finish using standard operating procedures or other existing documentation when available. In order to properly and thoroughly define the use case, it is necessary to zoom in and review each stage of the workflow in detail to understand how it works in practice and how DHIS2 users will interact with it. Let's have a look at the example workflow that we see here. It has been created by understanding what the process is in country and also by reviewing documents such as the standard operating procedure. If you follow the diagram, it starts with the patient attending a facility at the very bottom left corner and ends in the reporting and decision-making process at the top of the diagram. It is important to note that not all stages in the program workflow will necessarily involve DHIS2. The idea is to review the overall workflow and discuss where interaction with DHIS2 would be most beneficial, keeping in mind that steps that do not directly involve DHIS2 
may still inform the configuration of the DHIS-2 system to meet the program's needs. Let's walk through a couple of examples and explain how different moving parts come together to form an overall use case for the event data model. First, we will use a real-life use case that has been implemented for collecting data on a malaria case line list. We will refer to this example in the course several times. The second use case we will use in this course is the Service Availability and Readiness Assessment, or SARA for short. This is a health facility assessment tool designed to assess and monitor the service availability and readiness of the health sector. In the next part of this presentation, we will go over some techniques used to zoom in on parts of a program workflow in order to form a use case in the event data model. We will start off by having a closer look at the malaria use case. 